So, with over a year of Unleash 2, I think we already had plenty of time to figure out what is the best build for your lovely ride. And as I don't really have any video to the channel actually talking about it, and we are also getting some new crown with the PlayStation Plus this month, I think it's finally the time to make this video. Firstly, for the love of all that is Hot Wheels, don't jump into the multiplayer with your stock build car. Honestly, it's more likely that you won't find any matches anyway. So, just go play a little bit of the campaign so you can farm resources to upgrade your car to ultimate class. Ok, now that we've got your car choice to ultimate, we are ready to start building our main, well, build. Step 1 is to pick the most perks. Whatever build you do, chances are you'll be using these two. They being the upgrade boost, an amazing perk that increases the boost acceleration of your car, with the downside of losing a little stat acceleration. I will tell you, the boost power you get with this perk alone is well worth any negative, making this one the most essential perk on any build. Following that, we got our second best perk in the game, Lightweight, a must perk on any vehicle. What? The good thing about this one is that there really is no negative about it. Every vehicle has its own weight, and Lightweight just makes them a little lighter. That's pretty much it. As a result of that, the acceleration stats of every vehicle gets increased. And yeah, we will talk about the side dash later, so don't worry about it. Right now, you probably already noticed those two main perks and started to think which one you should go after. Maybe we even thought, that green perk looks pretty good. That's made. Yeah, nerfing your speed while boost is a no-go. Also, to get this perk you need four other green perks which all nerf your boost regain. What you actually want to go is with Hyper Boost, the ultimate perk of the Blue Tree. This guy gives what every English player dreams more about, Boost Acceleration. You know, like the other very good perk. And, as we need 3 more blue perks to get this bonus, expect to have more boost regain. With that said, step 2 is getting those 3 blue perks. Firstly, we go with Quick Charge, also known as the Blue Drift perk by the community. It will nerf your handling a little, make it stiffer, less responsive, and in some vehicles, very understeering. But, on the other hand, you get quite a lot of boost while drifting. This perk is also phenomenal with the wiggling technique. Normally, if you're not drunk, you would drive straight on a straight line. But with the wiggling technique, as the name implies, you wiggle your car by braking, drifting left and right on a straight line, getting a ton of boost regain. On otherwise, a situation you'd have to rely only on the basic regain of the car. Personally, I'm not a fan of this, but it's something very important that everyone should eventually learn. Anyway, next we get the Kinect Charger, giving you even more boost regain while drafting. However, you will lose a little of the increased speed you would otherwise have. Deceptively, a very good perk to keep up with the pack, especially online. Lastly, for the blue bonus perk, we get the phase inverter. Does your car have a boost bar on its base ultimate form? If it has, don't think twice and get this perk. Know your fucking place, trash! Let's be real here. Boost bar was trash on the first game and still is here. If you're not driving on a track full of parking garage modules, you want to have a boost charge. It's just more boost and better regain. If the vehicle that you are driving already has boost charges, 
on its base ultimate form, like our lovely chicane right here. Then you are going to lock in the control dash perk. Remember that I said we will talk more about side dashes? Even with the lightweight nerf to the power and control dash nerf to the defense, you can pretty much fight and take down any other driver. As its most important feature being the S mobility grants you. Help you reposition or save yourself on trick situations. You can even come up with the jump mechanic tools as a form of emergence brakes. And with even less boost consumption, you get much more side shunt action. Now with hyper boost bonus active, we still have one extra space for one more perk. So step 3 is getting some safety. With unstoppable, you are very much unstoppable against some of the most annoying track models in the game and the most prevalent track obstruction. Barriers. What have I got? Not only you don't have to worry about barriers anymore, you also get to save some bush and time on situations you'd have to jump over it. And with that, congratulations! You complete the best build in the game. But hear me out. Well, hang on, you just... No, I like it. This is brilliant, but I like this. What if I said that you could change Unstoppable with Maximum Grip? Let me explain. Only boot drift is not for everyone. Even someone like myself with almost 500 hours struggles a lot with it, especially if I have to use on some of the other classes of the game. Also known as the Hybrid Drift on the community, it essentially gives you a very similar handling model to its base form, while you're still getting an extra but small amount of boost while drifting. Personally, this is my favorite bit as I much rather have the better control while being faster on corners than to have to deal with the blue drift on a lot of the tracks. For most of the rocket cars, there really is no other choice for me. Some of them can be way too stiff to run just with the blue drift to park. You don't know what pain is if you never drove a Master Suzuka with only quick charge. The understeer is just too much. Yep, I like hybrid handling even on bikes. And if you're one of those that don't like lightweight on bikes, then you can just take it out and put unstoppable back. This way you can keep the responsiveness and the ability to take corners very sharply that bikes are known for, while keeping that tiny little extra regain on your drifts. Drifters are some of the best blue drifter users in the game, as they naturally have a lot of handling on its base form. Going just blue, you similar to the bikes, nerf their strongest characteristic, which is the sharp handling. However, this class in general needs all the help it can get on the boost department, so blue build it is. The infamous ATVs are well known for their amazing boost power and boost regain thanks to the off-road class and being super lightweight similar to the bikes. Their corner capabilities? Not so much. Going just green drift here works quite well and makes them usable on pretty much any situation. Of course, on less technical tracks, you will definitely try the IBT Drift build with the ATVs. And yet, another very infamous class among the community. The Swift cars are generally very stiff and heavy on the handling on its base form. So I would recommend going either Hybrid Drift or just Green Drift like I do on most of them. It's also noted that Swift cars have more regain than other heavy stat based classes like the Balance and Rockets. So it really isn't a big deal if you just want to go with the green handling on them. I'm going to be honest here that main build sucks with heavy duties and big off-roaders. They just don't have the handling to take the blue drift and will understeer like crazy. What I would recommend is maybe going hybrid drift or just green drift on these big boys as they generally have a lot of boost regain and boost charges which actually makes them quite viable with the green build Yup, green freaking build It's probably the only time that I would recommend going for this over the blue one 
so grab a heavy duty or a big off roader and give it a try it's actually really worth it oh and yeah they still keep the high regain even going full green build another device is that you could switch unstoppable with any of the other two defense perks as different tracks have different modules that you need to worry about Having the right perk on the correct tag will make races much easier. Lastly, if you really want to try a different type of build, going ivory can be a decent option too. Essentially, you don't get any of the two bonus, but you also don't get their negatives. It's generally better as a time trial build or on small tracks, as the longer it is, the less full reserves you will get per lap. And with that, I pretty much cover everything that I wanted to talk about. Best thing at the end of the day is to play enough to get multiple cops of your favorite vehicle, so you always be prepared for any track and situation. And as you progress through the game, getting even more resources so you can create and lab your own unique builds for each specific vehicle that you really like. Well, hopefully this little guide helps any of the new or even older Unleashed 2 players and for those new PS Plus members. Don't go online if you stock build. 